Should medical students aim for the top decile? When I say top decile, I actually mean first centile. That's today's topic of discussion. So Abdul, take it over from here. I'm going to say straight up, it is a trap for medical students to <laughs> aim for first centile. It is not worth it. So what centile for you then? I think the top 20 to 30 percent is, is a safe place to be. So the top three deciles, yeah? yeah. Top three deciles. Yeah. Top three deciles. I'll okay. tell you why, yeah? Long story short, the marginal, keyword marginal gains for coming first centile at the expense of crucial skill set, relationship acquisition is not worth it. Mm. And first centile does not equal better doctor. Mm, that's true. That's 100% true, I'd say. Yeah. And stop me because I'm going to go ham. Yeah. Is doctors average out over time and they get to a certain standard, right? Mm -hmm. And... I'm saying that because I'm not even a first centile student here, so I can't really comment on it. But I think a lot of emphasis is placed on getting first centile, smashing your exams, mm. which requires you spending hours on ending the library, banging out revision, not doing any socialising, not going to any societies, not taking up any roles. I don't see it as worth it anymore. You're really anti-studying, aren't you, man? Anti-studying. <laughs> Anti-achievement. Let me flip it to you, though. You're a first centile student. You were throughout pretty much med school. Is it worth it? So, so is it? We'll get to the is it worth it? Yeah. Let's talk about first what it means to to go for the first centile, okay, or the yeah. first decile. All right. So I tell you why. Even I did it. I tell you why I targeted it in the first place. Exactly. Right. So let's talk through it. All right. So let's talk through the background of where I come from. Mm -hmm. We just we have to start there because it, it emanates from there, right? So I went to college, sitting in sixth form. A handful of us went to med school, right? Two or three maybe actually, I don't know. Anyways, a um, handful of us went off to med school and suddenly you get to med school, right? And let's be honest, you're brushing shoulders where lineage of doctors, mm -hmm. their fathers, their forefathers, uh, some of them turning up in, in brand new Mercedes uh, to, to lecture theatres. These are a different class of people. So when it came to me, maybe it's my insecurity at the time, um, but when it came to me and I was sitting there, I was thinking, all right, I have to go toe to toe to these with these people. Now I'm not going to go toe to toe with them with money, with wealth, with my car, right? I still can't do that, right? I'm a qualified doctor. I still can't go toe to toe, right? But anyways, my point is right. But what you can go toe to toe with is to show them that you can fight absolutely academically with them, right? You can actually put up a good, and you can you can rub shoulders with them at that level. So in my head, I'm like, all right, fine, and actually. My first, I was struggling at, at the first few lectures. I was like, damn, this, this stuff is hard, man. Um, so to prove myself, I was like, okay. Part of it was to also prove that I can do it to other people so they know that I'm not, I'm not no one. No one. Um, again, probably an insecurity. But I think also to myself, right? From day, from day I was always like, I'm going to go for the best in everything, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's the startup world, the podcast, the YouTube, I want to be amongst the best. Mm -hmm. And it, it's what naturally drives me. I'm a hyper competitive person, naturally. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I so going for the first centile does mean all of those things you said, right? I don't know, maybe if there's a few first centiles out there that can disagree and they've mm -hmm. got that natural, natural talent. But for someone like me, I put in hours and hours and hours when you were chilling yeah. and you were like yo come out what would i say yeah so i think no. th this episode is a good one because we are both at the opposite ends of the spectrum You're not that bad so pretending yeah, all right <laughs> but he's I'm not 10th right? all right he's been, when you were studying on placements revising i was watching netflix and movies and i was going out etc etc right yeah yeah so the hours you put in mm -hmm. studying the difference between our epm was only one point yeah, 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 but where were we? <laughs> yeah, but the difference was like you ended up in London mm. and then I ended up in Coventry. Then the SJT has a, a big factor to play in that, right? Mm -hmm. But what you said is interesting is, and I do agree with that point, is when it comes to competing or when it comes to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with people, I think knowledge mm. is the one thing that your background, your wealth, nothing, nothing com compares it. And I think it puts everyone on a le level playing field to a certain mm -hmm. degree. And I can see that. I get that now. As in, you come to this new university, Kings, everyone's mm -hmm. gone, you know, you're the first generation to even go to university, right? Exactly. And now you're trying to compete with these people. And the only thing that puts you toe-to-toe -to -toe with them is your centile grades, right? Yeah. Medicine. Medicine is hyper-competitive, right? Super. Tell me 
your first center, right? Did you feel people were hating on you or this dog eat dog mentality? You know, you know, so this is the thing, right? So dog eat dog mentality absolutely exists and it still exists now because I spoke to medical students and the whole shebang still exists of, you know, notes, societies have certain societies have notes, certain sports societies, certain whatever based societies. Everyone's got certain notes that they're not Share. disseminating, right? Um, uh, and then um, spreadsheets. There's people that keep spreadsheets of who performed what grades. So, so that that's still there. That that is still there, and I think that'll still be there. Let's. I don't know how that's gonna get, um, to be honest, uh, stamped out. But let's talk about what it's like, right? There's not. It's not necessarily hatred. It's not hatred at all, actually. So let's talk amongst the first decile lot. They're super competitive. Yeah. If you look at it, publishing left, right, and center, they're going to conferences. They're going to surgical. Courses. You've been to a surgical course. So yeah. <laughs> don't try it. So um, so it's super super competitive, right? And from the outside, it does feel like because you're up there, you're a bit you're a bit secluded. But you're naturally secluded because to get there, you were in the library when everyone else was chilling out. Exactly. When everyone was when everyone else was going to a dinner, you decided to go to the library to study. I made those those decisions, right? I said I'm not going to go. I'm not going to chill out today because I'm going to go and study. Mm. Right, so it makes you feel a little bit isolated, right? Not hated, but isolated. Um, what about you? You did you hate all the first centile, all the first decile no, guys? First center, respect to them yeah. because I studied with you, mm, you put yeah. in the hours, I, was, I fell asleep mm. or whatever, right? So, everyone that gets first centile deserves it. I'm not saying that. So, if you're a first centile student, you deserve it, you put in the work in, mm. you, you deserve that grade. I'm not taking that away mm. from you. Mm. My question is, is it worth it though at the expense? So Think of how many restaurants you missed out. Remember, we used to chill back at med school barely while you were studying, banging out exams, right? Is it worth it looking back in hindsight? Yeah. That's what I want to kind of talk about today. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so let, let's make sure we're not talking about regret because yeah. I don't regret it. Yeah. No one regrets getting first yeah. center, right? <laughs> no, yeah. no, you can regret it. I, I, like, I can put it in a way where I can say it sort of feels like a regret, but the more and more I reflect on it, I don't regret it because I feel like no, it was needed for you know certain things started to fall in place because I was a first centile. Someone headhunted me, or because I was a first centile, a surgeon took me on to do this particular thing, and I learned that skill. So maybe things aligned because of the first centile. But you're right, and I have to put my hands up to that, right? So when I look back, and this is the advice now, I was speaking to someone who actually got first centile in an exam, and I said. Don't try not to make one mistake I made, which is that you can actually probably stay in the first centile, right? Reduce the work hours, work smarter, mm. work smarter. That's so important. I didn't work smart, by the way, right? I got first centile through pure hours and hours and hours of work when I'm sure I could have done that if I was a bit more uh, smarter with how I studied. But anyways, the point I'm trying to, trying to make is that I said my advice was diversify yourself. Mm. I wish... Like, you know, the, the skills that I have, like right now, they're like the Canva skill, being able to design, Photoshop, video edit, um, communication skills, being able to speak on camera, all of these things. I wish I started it earlier. And I think if I were to work smarter, I would have been able to keep up the first centile thing. So you're right. But if you, if you, if you said to me, would you put in the same hours to get first centile? And, and by the way, me, if you put in all those hours, obviously you can't use those hours to socialize, make lifelong friends, make do this, that and the other. I would say, hell no, man. I would say, hell no, it is not worth it. Because like you said, so we were in different deciles, right? Different centiles. You went to Coventry, I went to London. But look where we are now. Mm. Exactly the same position. And what we're trying to say is what you said earlier on, over the course of it, you average out. And no one asks you. Does anyone ask you now what your A level grade was? No, oh, I can't even remember my own A level grades. Does anyone ask what UK cat was? No, what decile you were? What centile no, you was? No, no one remembers the first centiles. This is not like the Olympics, right? This isn't, <laughs> you know, a gold medal winner, a bronze, and a silver. And you remember, like, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not out here. You're not, you were like, you're not the Usain Bolt of med school, right? Exactly. No one remembers the first centiles. People do remember, and they remember you for being academically astute, doing well in the exams, mm. and it kind of talks about, you touched on it, is it helped your branding. Mm -hmm. And I think there are pros that come with first centile. Mm -hmm. Because you were first centile, because people knew you were academically driven and very well critical and analytical in the way you were thinking, mm -hmm. certain opportunities did arise. Exactly. And what you did, 
mm-hmm. was very good was the fact that for some reason you took on those opportunities and it yeah. opened up your world you could have easily very well said i don't want the opportunity one mm-hmm. of those opportunities was the heck of head of academia for ma right mm-hmm. you could have said no it's a big time sink mm-hmm. away from studying i might not get first center on my next exam but what you did is you accepted yeah. that took on the challenge and i bet you revised less often Absolutely. when you're doing running you know heck of academia for mom and you you put workshops and seminars in place for mothers mm-hmm. in bangladesh right it did open up the world and it brought in other skill sets and over time i think towards the end of med school both me and you realized Absolutely. that skill acquisition relationships networking is just mm-hmm. as important as first center ranking 100% 100% i i think in general as well the concept of putting all your eggs into one basket i think we're we're in an age of like we said an age of opportunity right an age of opportunity as entrepreneurs even as as doctors as you could as lawyers as bankers whatever there's an opportunity everywhere and i think like i think shafiel said that university don't come to university for 5 6 years and just leave with the degree yeah. leave with everything you can absolutely grab that's yeah. friends included social life memories like for example our electives mm. we spent a, a lot of money on it yeah. let's not go into the details but we spent a lot of money on it and i do not regret it one bit and i'll remember that for the rest of my life yeah it's definitely like i think yeah the fact that we imbra- i feel we're fortunate enough to realize the reality of medical school mm-hmm. of university towards the end yeah first two years obviously we were super driven even i to a certain extent mm-hmm. just because i didn't get first center didn't mean i wasn't revising and putting the hours in mm-hmm. maybe not as much as that next person but i still were aiming to do well yeah, exactly. so which brings me on to kind of talking about you should always try to aim to do well you should always try to be the best you should mm-hmm. always try to achieve to get top spot right mm-hmm. but obviously do it with moderation do it with insight right mm-hmm. and what i'm trying to say is medical is university man Mm. you're there to have a social life to make friends to you know electives to have these journeys mm. and i don't think it's ever worth all those hours you spend in the library studying mm. but that goes to me to say would you like you said the skills you've gained now mm. if i said to you you can have the same skills earlier in your medical school career mm. but you would have to drop down to second decile okay i'll accept one decile but if you said several decals yeah. no but little no but you, you touched on it earlier rando a lot of my personal branding was based upon being academically astute right yeah. that was my unfair advantage yeah. do you get me so your unfair advantage was you could think laterally you had different skill a different skill set that i never had but those opportunities came to you that never came to me yeah. the opportunities that came to me were based upon those now if you said to me all right would i have preferred different opportunities i would this is why i don't regret it because right now for example as co-founders of peer right being having that academic brand having the know how how to study how to learn how to do it well how to collaboratively learn the whole idea of now so let let's go into what you said about hyper competitiveness mm. as well as first centiles first deciles or the, let's just say the top uh, whatever four or five deciles right it's high we're all trying to compete for that one or two marks yeah. right but like you said they all average out across the country and then across the career term Literally. right so why not work collaboratively mm. right so dr manyali did this the ent consultant him and his boy went for essentially the same ent consultant post right mm. they still work together and you know what at the end they still got two amazing posts exactly, yeah. that they both loved and guess what they both won mm. so i think our pete do you remember our pete's consultant yeah uh, i forgot his name what was his name i can't remember cool cardio uh, no he was a thoracic surgeon yeah uh, evelina evelina yeah. so he was so cool cuz when you looked at him what did you see you saw a person who was just, let's just describe him what how would you use descriptive words how would you describe him he was tall tall he looked like a surgeon yeah not to go to stereotype but he had a bit of a laid back look to him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you knew he was very intelligent and very smart. How did he speak to you? In a very calm, casual way. And and you, like you said he was laid back. He was yeah. so chilled out. Yeah. There wasn't this thing of Didn't seem to phase him. Exactly. And what do you remember what he what advice he gave us as oh. a consultant thoracic pediatric thoracic surgeon? Oh, what did he say? He said take it easy and chill, man. <laughs> he said take it easy and chill. You will get to what job you want. Take it easy and chill and enjoy it. And he's someone 
right at the top of the chain you would want to be as a first center student you would want to Exactly. be there exactly he's got all the talent the skill and he's telling you to chill out he's telling you to take it easy right so what is that trying to say we don't need to be hyper competitive we can all win mm -hmm. don't let the system pitch you against each other you know what in med school this is it i felt pitched against people the system made me think it's me versus you not me with you mm -hmm. but across the country do you realize it's actually you're all at, like kings could team up imperial could team up you could team up and you could team up across the country as well Right, so I think the idea that we're pitched against each other is wrong, and they're dropping the points for all of this as well, which is quite nice to see. And like you said, it doesn't matter in the long term. Yeah, I think that's the thing that matters at the end is hindsight. Obviously, virtue. You start thinking things differently. Mm. Everyone averages out, mm. and you basically. Yeah, this is the thing I was going to talk about. You know, this pitching against each other, right? Mm. That. Is not a natural way to work when you become a junior doctor. Exactly. Now so you see it. Now you, the dog eat dog man still exists mm. even in medicine in your career for surgical points, portfolios, etc., etc. But the day to day job helping people is teamwork thing. You need to help people. You can't go and do all the bloods before everyone else because they get processed at the same time. <laughs> the, the results are on the thing at the same time, right? That dog eat dog mentality, the hyper competitiveness, I don't think is compatible mm. with. You know, being a doctor, right? It's teamwork, man. You can't do things without your regs experience. Your consult as well. You're gonna go and start banging out a, a an arthroplasty or a hip replacement. <laughs> Mister Mister Jelani said that no matter how clever you are, you can never be experienced. Exactly. So, so? <laughs> you, you you can't win. But I think, like I said, and this is what I remember when we were talking is I think a part of your innate mm. personality is mm. academia. Mm. research doing well in exams mm. and i don't think despite what you did even if you had to spend the hours you as an individual you as your personality will allow you to do it you be maybe it's one of those ones, even if you didn't you'll feel bad you'll feel yeah, you're not being yeah, true yeah. to yourself exactly. do you know what i mean so it's not just for the sake of first center ranking no, or to no, get no, top no, spot no. i think your personality in part is mm. academically driven if you put out if you put an exam in front of me I, I definitely would study hours and hours for you know it. I mean? Like hands You're down, re right. regardless. Yeah. You don't, we, you don't need someone to have a gun to your head mm -hmm. for you to revise and bang out revision, right? It's part of your nature to excel and do well. You, you know what it is as well? It's the it's not just exams, right? Just think, it just came into my mind now. Whether it's an interview, whether now yeah, if it's a VC interview, let's mm -hmm. let's put it in entrepreneurship because we're involved in that. Say it's a VC interview, a pitch, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's recruiting, creating. Uh, content etc whatever it is i put hours and effort into it and i think it's the same hours and effort relatively to put in the same to get first centile so let's say for yeah. youtube the whole light and setup how long did it take for, to set yeah. this up we didn't just sit in front of let's say the radiator that way and just do it we, we positioned ourselves mm. so it's genuine care and thought into anything that i'm doing right um okay. so yeah is it worth it? And I remember the story, and I always remember the story, and I tell everyone, it's that time when you study so hard, you knocked yourself out, right? <laughs> Is it worth the unnecessary stress, the mental health burnout that comes with it? It's not, man. It's, it's, let, let, let's just like, if we had to pick, pick an answer, if we, if we had no choice, if we couldn't sit on the fence, it's not worth it. It's not worth competing against. You should be competing against yourself. Yeah. That's as good as it gets. It sh you should not be... Um, competing with people against people you shouldn't be pitched against each other and ranked mm. so what i'm ranked against you Th mm. that's it that's that's what it is right if they say in a cohort of two people mm. one of us is going to be one one of us is going to be second that pitches me against you mm. but like you said in the workplace you i have to work with you when i say i've got say it's me and you managing a ward 30 patients we need to work together i can't say you f off i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna do it because i'm the clever one mm. or you, you vice versa um so it doesn't work you're right it doesn't work and i would say no it's not worth it but the question of should you aim for it should you work hard should you put effort in should you care for it absolutely absolutely yeah. because let me tell you now right you it, it might seem like people don't but when you're on paper when you're competing against something for someone mm -hmm. those are the fine mar margins that sometimes just sometimes again yeah. you might say it's not worth it because it took you a billion hours to get that fine mm -hmm. margin but that margin sometimes squeezes you in yeah. uh, no i agree for me obviously i still don't think it's worth it mm -hmm. and obviously you to a certain extent but i think we both agree that 
there is no harm aiming to become a first death cell mm -hmm. as long as you're not set with anything to come out on top of anything be it entrepreneurship in medicine in consultancy in surgery in exams mm -hmm. there is sacrifice right it's a tax you pay right exactly. but just make sure you're paying the right tax right do you know what i mean don't get mugged off like the middle class in this country you need to be like a businessman paying that corporate tax right and it has to be healthy exactly. that, that that's what you're, you're you're trying to get at basically have a healthy academic life that's yeah. what you're trying to say you're you're saying is it worth it and the answer is no and it's because you're trying to say no because it's an unhealthy academic exactly. life but what's an what's an healthy academic life then What's saying that that reminds me there were a lot of people that we know that did well in med school that did get first center and they left they they had you would not be able to tell they were first center student 100 percent socializing obviously there is certain mm. things came naturally to them mm. studying was easier mm. maybe it was they were studied smart and not hard right exactly that's one so thing not, Tom, right yeah, yeah, absolutely. that we've even had on the podcast that were very smart the way they did it right so you can have first center mm. and you can still chill party do whatever you want type of thing mm. i think Maybe it's a question of aim for it. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it at the expense of other certain things, but you evaluate that as an individual of what you want to get out of medical school. And I think don't sacrifice everything for it. Maybe that's what we're trying to say. Don't yeah, sacrifice don't. your whole university years, extracurricular activities, relationships, family, friends, mm -hmm. to get a first centile rank because mm -hmm. it is marginal gains in that sense, isn't it? But if yeah. you can do it all, if it helps you with certain things then fair enough if it opens up opportunities and that's the persona that's the personal brand you want to build for yourself then fair enough that's a different fair thing enough, altogether but i think take things with a pinch of salt and there's a lot of and i think i don't think it's the students themselves i think it's the system exactly the system makes you compete against each other and first centile and that fear of oh my god i'm not going to get my first centile job or i'm not going to work in london next to my family and friends whatever right so i think it is a system thing 100%. I completely agree. It's Again, it's that notion of, like I said, if there's in a cohort only me and you, mm. I'm going to be one, or you're going to be two, or you're going to be two, I'm going to be one, mm. uh, or the other way. So someone has to be ranked one, right? Uh, one, two, three, 100, 400, whatever. So we need to find a better way, a better system of making collaboration. Oh, wow. Fine. So let's say we've talked about this. We've shared our kind of opinions on the matter. We've kind of shared our own experiences with it. When someone's listening to this, right, what advice would you give them? Because we've had that question before on Instagram, is it worth getting first center or how should I play the game? And it is a game. I think med school is a game. Uh, absolutely. So so again, so let's talk about a healthy academic life and a healthy university life. All right. So let's talk about what working smart means. This is the whole reason I'm doing this whole series on YouTube as well. I want people to also love the process of learning, right? Um, so working smart, right, is also knowing what you need to know at what stage, right? So... A lot of the times when we're studying hours and hours and hours, we're reading journals and papers to memorize a percentage, a study, a finding or something. But let's be honest, the 80-20 rule, the exam, most of the marks are coming from the core material. Mm. At King's, they were coming from the lecture notes. If they weren't on the lecture notes, most of the time, they weren't in the exam, mm. right? So it's coming from there. So I think it's about knowing what you need to know, studying what you need to know for that step. And then I personally say a little bit more. Just a little bit more, a little bit more to give you that extra edge maybe, that's it. But not the hours and hours and hours and hours trying to memorize that detail that will never get examined on, right? You don't need to know, for example, what I learned in my cardiology BSc about the calcium flux in the heart at medical school. You don't get tested at that level, so why are you learning about it? You can learn it if you're interested, out of fun, but not for exam purposes. So I think you need to know what you're trying to achieve, right? Being a safe doctor doesn't require much and we know that. Yeah. Being a safe doctor, to become an F1 doesn't require much mm. instead of knowing how to escalate A, B, C, D, E, all the bits and bobs that the medical school drills into you. Those mm. things are drilled into you. Mm. But the the theory and all of that stuff that gets examined, you don't need to know that. So I think know what you need to know, balance it out. And then the rest is diversify yourself. Mm. I think that's where the fun of university is. Mm. I felt I had more fun in the latter half of my university because of diversification. Right, being able to bring your own ideas alive, bring your own concepts alive, um, collaborate on other projects, go to conferences to present your ideas, your concepts, and all of these things. So I think diversification and studying with the know-how of what you're studying to get to what destination, and that's it, really. And I remember we talked about in fourth year. I don't know if you remember is when you did pick up these extra roles 
you had less time and you became more productive in that time exactly. and you did more high with learning because exactly. it's the Pomodoro thing right if you knew you had eight hours a day to study and revise because you have no other commitments no other responsibilities you're going to pretty much spend the whole of those eight hours revising studying but if I said to you I'm you know you've got a lecture to deliver you need to prep this workshop and seminar mm -hmm. we're flying out to Bangladesh next week exactly. make sure you, you you condense your learning you and revision well. do you know what I mean right you're going to be thinking what's the highest yield what's the additional stuff how do I smash it all out right Mm -hmm. And your quality of life, and I think med school becomes a lot more enjoyable. Hundred percent. Med school is amazing, man. Like I look back and I think still, hands down, what a great experience it was. Um, so no, nah, it was still a, such an amazing. But again, these things like we like listening to podcasts, listening to vi these type of videos and stuff, right? Sometimes you think, oh, I've done it wrong all this time. But the truth is, right, life is this whole cycle of you make a mistake, you learn and improve. So I think anyone watching this, anyone listening to this, or you might have completed medical school, you might be a qualified doctor watching this and going to do a master's or PhD or go into a training program. I think the idea of don't burn yourself absolutely in one one sort of trajectory, yeah. trying to study and study and study and not living life at all. Take everything on a balance and just improve what you what you lack. Yeah. Um, so even if you're if you've made the mistake or if you're making the mistake, just correct yourself. It's okay, right? Um, and you'll find what you learn helps you in later life. So for example, those things you just said now, taking those extra roles on at the latter half of medical school. Look at right now, right? We're married. We got babies. We got a pro we got our startup. We got this podcast to run, right? Time management. You better know how to do well, right? If you don't, we're failing everything. I agree, man. And I think if you're a first center student, bravo. I don't know how you lot do it, but take a step back. I think take a step back, evaluate, and just the one thing I want to say is just try to get the most out of medical school. Yeah, absolutely. But. Let's also finish with this point, which I really want to say, respect to also people who are in the first centile, man. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you now, let me tell you now, it is hard. It is hard. I remember I was revising and you revise at every moment sometimes and you work so hard to get that first centile. So at the same time, you know what? Respect to those people who are doing it. Yeah, have done I agree. It. Respect. Yeah. Immense respect to them. Um, fine. This was, I think, a good discussion. Good fight. Yeah. This is a fight, basically. Uh, yeah. I feel like I got, it was a run. I got, <laughs> a, off it, got it off his chest. Yeah, I got a lot of things off my chest, right? Angry um, And then I'm going to show this video to my mom. And then she'll understand why I did what I did at med school. You understand? Look, at the end of the day, we're in the same room. We're yeah. working on the same projects. And you know what? I, I couldn't do this thing, all of this without you. And vice versa, right? So yeah. it works. All right. Let's wrap up. Always keen to hear comments what you guys think and now we're back on youtube make sure you like make sure you comment make sure you subscribe you know how it works